I have started. Yeah, uh, thanks Pooja for basically starting the recording. Uh, so we will proceed ahead with our demo for today. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Uh, uh, good morning to everybody, guys, and welcome to our Ariba demo session. Uh, now, uh, before we begin with our Ariba demo session, uh, let's try to understand what is our goal. Uh, and what we are basically trying to accomplish in this training. We have been doing this training for last five years. We started our training in Arima in two, from 2017. Okay. And we have trained more than 3000 plus participants. Now, what is our goal? So, uh, I've been working in Arima for the last nine years almost. Right. So, uh, whenever I used to work in the project, right. And I used to see that uh, Ariba consultants are working. So I always used to see that they are struggling. Even I have also struggled to a certain point. So I tried to understand what was the issue or why the struggling happens. Now the struggling happens because of our assumption of our uh, thinking like, okay, Ariba is just like any SAP product of our thinking, like whatever the process we are able to see in MM and in SRM, same thing will happen in Ariba. Of our thinking that whatever way we have configured SRM and MM or s coaching and procurement, same thing we will do it in Ariba. Because of this reasons, one, what happens is like, we are going and implementing Ariva. Very good. But what is happening? We are delivering from MM perspective, SRM perspective. So that is the reason. So then we understood that we have to change our mindset. We have to change how we are doing the project. Then only what will happen? This struggles will end and we can do this work in the project very effortlessly so with this motto we started this training we are not going to do any standard training at all standard training means what theoretical things you will see that in every session starting from today till the last session all of you guys will basically see that we are focusing on what we are focusing on scenarios. We are focusing on the things which you will face in front of the client. Not standard Ariba. Why? Because anybody can have a look at the SAP Press Ariba book. Run through the SAP standard configuration guidebooks. Read it and explain it. Because that is the standard SAP Ariba practices. But the thing is like when you go to a project, what are you doing? You are replacing the standard SAP Ariba practices with that of the client's business process. So that means it's not the knowledge. What I see is like majority of Ariba consultant, what they're coming is like, they're having good knowledge on Ariba standard process. But when client will give, okay, this is my requirement. This mapping of the client requirement into Ariba's process, that is where the struggle part is there. Even I also struggle for the first two, two and a half years of my career in Ariba. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is our goal. Our goal is basically to gather knowledge so that this knowledge help us in working in the project. So this is not a training session. This is a knowledge sharing session, guys. Okay. So our uh, methodology, the way how we basically deliver this training is very, very different. Okay, now keep this thing in your mind. Now, very good. Let us start our demo rather than wasting time. Okay, now 
and you will notice there is no ppt and there won't be any ppt why because as i said we are not here to learn standard river we are not here to learn standard river we are going to understand what we do in the project because in the project please remember one thing your knowledge won't be tested people generally say to me that manoj our ariva knowledge will be tested in the project and i will say no what gets tested the application of your knowledge and that is what we are going to see okay what is sap ariva whenever this term comes to your point over here uh, i hear multiple line definition it's a procurement software through which uh, we can do strategic procurement as well as operational procurement or our day to day procurement boss instead of answering <laughs> you are creating much more question in the mind so how will you basically define ariva in a very simplified manner so that everybody can understand so how so let us try to understand that what is ariva a procurement focused software we will not say application but we will say software now please focus on this thing procurement focused software not an erp acha yes so that is why i was telling to all of you guys that when you are comparing mm s4 hana sourcing and procurement with that of ariva actually mm and sourcing and procurement they are not a software they are a module within a erp okay exactly so <coughs> excuse me so keep this thing in your mind it's a very very important thing that this is not a part of your erp it's just a procurement for the software so generally what happens is like majority of the mm guys what they will think that what we can do it in mm we can do it in ariva then i will say boss yes but there are certain functionalities which you think happens in mm but actually happens in other modules of erp that you cannot accommodate in ariva because ariva is not an erp okay now procurement focus software based on cloud services now i think majority of you guys understand what's the difference between a cloud and on premise on premise means uh, like your uh client is implementing or installing the software where in their own application server that is on premise okay manoj what about ariva ariva cannot be implement you know installed within the client's application server ariva has its own application server within which ariba is installed so that is why it's a cloud solution so that means what will happen client don't have to buy a application server to install ariba within it okay that means what that means he will see whenever you are going up against a ariba job opportunity he will see they are function consultant job only it's a functional consultant job it's not a technical consultant job why because there is no technical ha huh. before 2010 ariva used to have one premise solution so for that you need, you have a technical consultant but after 2010 <coughs> excuse me ariva was launched as a cloud solution so since it was launched as a cloud solution there is no technical rules 
and we will understand in our session one that whenever there is some source code changes what will happen is like we will you know we can we can't do anything but we will give the logic to whom to the adipa engineering team adipa engineering team have access to the source code and they can change the source code so that will be the part of announcement request <coughs> excuse me excuse me yeah This is the meaning of SAP Ariva. Very good. Now, what are the solution? This is sometimes they are basically also called as, you know, Strategic sourcing plus procurement module. Downstream is basically called as buying and invoicing module or solution. Okay. Old wine, new bottle. Nothing else. Okay, very good. Now, whenever I ask any Ariba functional consultant that what's the meaning of upstream solution? What's the meaning of downstream solution? Why we have upstream solution? Why there is downstream solution? What's the reason behind it? What happens is, confusion majorly confusion So let us try to understand. Uh, before I go into upstream and downstream, whenever you do procurement, irrespective of which product you are having, uh, you will have two solutions or you will have <clears throat> two major procurement process. That is new products. That means the products which you have never bought before and the old products. Old product means what? Which you have already bought. So the major distinguishing feature is if you haven't buy a product, that means source of supply will be unknown. That means from which supplier you're buying at what price you're buying, you will not know. That is the source of supply. But on the other hand, old product means the product which you have already bought. What will happen? Source of supply will be known. Now, how will you <coughs> excuse me? So, how will you do the procurement then?
now this old product or new product is basically called as non catalog items in ariva yes there is nothing called as new product and old products in ariva actually it uh, this are basically called as catalog items and non catalog items okay so please remember non catalog item means new product which have never bought before catalog items are basically what items which have already bought now what happens is you will understand shortly a little bit later that catalog items are loaded as catalog subscription in downstream in downstream we will basically load this data that's it nothing else that's it okay so very good what about non catalog item so non catalog item you cannot load why because it's a it, it, it's a new data uh, a new uh, new product which you have never bought before so how will you basically save this data you can't now that means all of you will say to me manoj that for non catalog item i have to devise one process for catalog item i have to devise one process yes very good now what is the process definition finding and finalizing the base source of base source of supply for for non catalog items okay this is upstream okay what is downstream okay so what does it actually means it means if you look at upstream in upstream basically what we are saying he was non catalog item only so so supply will be unknown so in that case what we will do in upstream we will find and finalized the base source of supply for the non catalog items okay what we will do in the downstream in downstream we will be working with catalog items only so catalog item means what source of supply will be known so, so source of supply is known means what we will directly order the product from the supplier and then the supplier will give us the deliveries we will take the deliveries and we will pay the supplier for catalog item why because for them source of supply is known so this is what we do in upstream as well as in downstream and this simple thing what happens is like whenever we ask majority of the ariva consultant are not able to understand why because as i said to all of you guys before that they are trying to do a definition or understand about a definition nothing else but it's not a definition why because when you go to a project there you are having a clear understanding 
कि द सेग्रीगेशन ऑफ अपस्ट्रीम एंड डाउन स्ट्रीम इट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस वे ओके वेरी गुड नाउ बिफोर आई गो डायरेक्टली इन टू अपस्ट्रीम सोल्यूशन एंड downstream solutions you need to understand certain things and what is that certain things first that is upstream solution has a separate database downstream solution also have a separate database very very important now what do, all of you will say manoj what do you mean by this thing that upstream solution has a separate database downstream solution has a separate database because when we look at sap separate database is a very unique concept in ariva why is that because if you look at ecc you look at s4 hana you look at srm all of this product is having a single database so as a functional consultant you were not constrained it does not matter boss but when you come to ariva you see that the upstream solution is present in one database downstream solution is present in one database does it create issue and i will say yes it does create issue what is the first issue so when i say that in upstream we are working with non catalog item and in downstream we are working with catalog items so please remember <coughs> excuse me that you are loading catalog items where in downstream so that means it is available in downstream database please don't expect catalog items to be available within the upstream database acha so manoj it means that in upstream database or in upstream solution we will never have catalog items yes one of the most important breakthrough which you can understand over here is what that this is two different databases major dip the river functional consultant thinks that catalog items are available not only downstream but also in upstream and that's a very wrong assumption okay so please keep this thing in your mind now okay very good you will see majority of the other transactional documents which are coming over here they are also having issues why why is that so because of one thing and what is that one thing because of separate databases okay now let us go into upstream solution now first and foremost thing when you will go into the upstream we will begin with sourcing what is the meaning of sourcing so sourcing solution actually means in a very simple way what is it 
find the best source of supply find the best source of supply that is basically nothing but upstream solutions done now within that you have rfi and you will have rfp majorly request for info and request for proposal now what we will do in rfi and rfp over here what's the uh, you know major thing which we will do over here the answer is simple in request for info we will basically begin with or we will ask the supplier to give a technical quotation and here in rfp we will ask the supplier for price quotation now what happens is whenever any ariba functional consultant goes into a project and they basically uh, uh, what you can say uh, do the implementation client generally ask them this question that what we will implement first rfi or rfp that means when we are beginning a sourcing project process where we will start from the rfi or rfi then rfp which one now majority of you guys will basically think on this part also that okay in mm majority of the time you will start with rfi you will ask the technical quotation then the technical fit supplier will be called for price quotation then you will also remember no 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 it will not happen always like this only for new product what we will do since we don't know about the product we will ask for technical quotation once everything is okay then i will ask for price quotation exactly but on the other hand if i look at the normal process what and what is that normal process the normal process is if it is a catalog item then that means it's a old product we know who is the supplier what is the uh, technical things and all those things we will go at with rfp so you will say manu rfi means we will work with non catalog items and rfp means catalog items right now what do you think guys what i have said over here is correct for rfi and rfp whatever i have said is correct or wrong what do you think see technical quotation for rfi price quotation for rfp is correct but uh, for non catalog item we will do rfi for catalog item we will do rfp is this uh, generation correct
wrong. Actually, it is wrong. Why? See, this is why. This is why I said that catalog items over here are only part of downstream. It can never be part of upstream. Sourcing is part of which solution? <coughs> Excuse me. Upstream solution only. That is why. Okay. So this is wrong. Now, all of you will then say to me that Manas, there are only non catalog items. Okay. Now it becomes much more tough for all of you guys. Manas, you look at RFI and RFP over there, both of them are non catalog items. Both of them are non catalog items. Now, how, how I will differentiate between whether it's a RFI or RFP process? That we will understand in our session one, because this is the starting point for our discussion in sourcing. Because this kind of question your client will ask, how will you basically give a solution? Not from him, not from SRM. You have to understand over here. Then only you can give this definition that okay. For this scenario within non catalog item, we will follow RFI. For this, uh, for the other scenario within non catalog item, we will follow RFP. Okay. So now, as we said, sourcing means the finding the best source of supply. So what will happen? This sourcing project, we will send it to whom? We will send it to the supplier. Supplier will basically submit the response. Once they submit the response, what will happen? Once they submit the response, then we will award. Okay, this supplier has won the sourcing project. That means what? We have found out the best source of supply, but it is not enough. Why? Because the next step is contracting. Why? Because whatever you have agreed with the supplier, right? The supplier also must say, okay, Manoj, everything is okay with me. Yeah. Why? For that, you have to sign a legal agreement. You have to sign a legal agreement between buyer and supplier. Okay? Very simple thing. You know, don't think about, hey, what I will do or where I will do it. It's simple. Legal agreement between buyer and supplier. That is nothing but contracting. Now, what happens in a contracting? In Ariva contracting, we will basically work with contract authoring. You will see that we are basically working with documents only over here. That you have to be very, very clear about it. That uh, in Ariba contracts, you are working with documents only. Now, all of you will say to me, which document, Manoj? Then I will basically say, Word, Excel. Okay. So that part is basically called as contract authoring. Now, once you have worked mm -hmm. with the documents, uploaded the document, changed the document, published the document, then you will basically work on contract task. And you will complete the task over here. Once you complete the task, then your contract will be published. Now, all of you will say very good, Manoj. But there is a catch. And what is that catch? What happens is like majority of the functional consultant, they will not focus on this thing. And what is this focusing which you wanted to do? The focusing which we wanted to do over here is DFS versus ECA. Now, all of you will say, what is this DFS and ECA? You know, you know, is, is, is there any meaning out of it? Then I will say, yes, DFS actually stands for desktop file sync ECA stands for enhanced contract authoring so what's the issue
that is uh, before 2016 what happened ariba was using dfs desktop file syncing now working with these documents and changing the documents and editing the documents and everything was very very tough exactly now what's the issue with the dfs so dfs was basically based out of activex technology now you know activex technology is only supported by internet explorer so pre, you know till 2016 december i think yeah majority of the clients of ariva contract management they used to have internet explorer and working with the documents uploading the documents updating the document was very very tough so what happened was like majority of the <coughs> excuse me customers who were implementing ariva they were saying i will not implement contract boss i will not implement contract what you can do plain as, as simple now ariva understood that they are losing out money so then they basically designed another solution and what was that solution enhanced contract authoring now this is supported by java java is supported by all the browsers now all of you will say which browser manoj opera firefox chrome edge safari within mac os you will only get safari only that is also supported so then what happened was like majority of the clients started using eca and please remember with ariva you will be mostly be working with european or us client and since you will be working with european and us clients majorly okay you will see what is their uh, you know uh, logic or what is their uh, 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 focus is that i will not use internet explorer if you are working with a south asian client like from india they will basically agree okay 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 boss i will use internet explorer but the european and us clients they will never agree why because they will say first of all i am using mac os so there is no other option apart from safari okay few of the clients will say i am using windows but due to security issue i will use only chrome or firefox only okay yes now we understood now what you will do with those clients dfs did not stand a chance but eca was there now all of you will say okay manoj you you know you told us about the eca process very very good i am very very happy but a small thing i want to focus and i will say okay what what does it has to do with our session then i will say right now if you go to the project you will only find eca contract now if you don't understand the dfs versus eca what will happen your process flow is different similarly your template configuration is also different acha so manoj that means basically if i see the dfs process and the dfs template configuration when i will go to eca what will happen all the hell will break loose and i will say 
exactly you are seeing one thing in a project and when you're going to the project you are seeing everything is different that is why i wanted to make sure that all of you guys understand that in our session whether it's a process flow session or a configuration session we are going to only understand eca not dfs okay now the third point all of you will say okay very good manoj what is that now guys just give me a moment i think somebody has came to our home just give me a moment yeah sorry guys yeah yes some of our neighbor came to our home over there so i was basically just uh, talking with them okay so let us understand supplier onboarding so what do you mean by supplier onboarding all of you will basically ask me are manoj what is the meaning of supplier onboarding so it's, it's it's a very simple thing So it means basically very simple that supplier onboarding is there. And what is the meaning of supplier onboarding? So supplier onboarding means how you are going to basically load the supplier into Ariba. Now, the thing is like, if you go to any theoretical trainer, they will say upstream start with supplier onboarding. They will say upstream start with supplier onboarding. Why? Because immediately they will say, we are going to SAP standard process. What SAP standard process is saying? Boss, onboard new supplier. Very good. Onboard new supplier. So everybody of you will say, okay, yes, Manoj. Then basically call those suppliers for sourcing. Okay. Supplier will give the what? Quotation. Done. You will award them and then you will sign the contract. Very good. This is the process which Ariba says as standard. Now, all of you guys know about this thing. This is wrong. Why? Because when you will go to implementation project, do you think your client will say, Are Manoj, find me some 2000 supplier, 2000 new supplier? All of you will say, No. Then I will say, Okay. So the client will load the supplier from where? From their ERP. Client will say, Are, I am having all my supplies. Where? In ERP itself, from ERP, I will basically copy them where? Into Ariba. Why I will try to find a you know, 2000, 3000, 5000 new supplier? I am already having a supplier in my ERP. You onboard them into Ariba. So that means the solution which Ariba is saying this is a standard process. That all of you guys know is wrong. So what happens? So all of you will say, Acha Manoj, I think this is majorly a part of integration, specifically master data integration. Why? Because we are replicating the supply from our ERP to our EBA.
exactly it makes sense and i will say exactly correct so that is the meaning of supply onboarding that is why i said that supplier onboarding is basically part of master data integration why i will begin my upstream process with them okay so that is why i have kept it as the last point in upstream now even though you will say this is a part of master data integration it will be a little bit complex process why you will see in ariba user interface you are having two user interface the first one is ariba buyer what is the second one second one is ariba network Now all of you will say, what is this Ariba network? Ariba buyer is basically used by buyers only. So it's not like an enterprise portal where uh, you will define ki Are boss, both buyer and supplier will be able to log in. Now, what happens over there? Now, all of you will basically say to me that uh, if you look at the Ariba buyer over here, here, uh, uh, what you can see, the buyers are logging. Enterprise portal, if you look at it, they are both buyer and supplier are logging in. So how the segregation is happening with the help of role. Now, Ariba basically say that if you give a wrong role, then what will happen? The supplier will basically get access to the buyers in production system and they can check everything. Huge security risk. So Ariba did not want it to go with this uh, issue or go with this problem. Okay. So what they went with or how they went with Manoj. So they went with two user interface over here. And what is that? Ariba buyer which is used by buyer and Ariba network, which will be used by suppliers. Okay, so please keep this thing in your mind. So this is basically nothing but suppliers. Now, supply request process. So, when you look at this process, you will see here we are capturing some basic data about the supplier and we are creating their profile where we are creating the profile in Ariba buyer. Exactly. So please keep this thing in your mind that we are basically capturing their data and we are putting their data in Ariba buyer. But can we use the supplier now? The answer is no. Now, why we can't use the supplier? Because we have just created their profile in Ariba buyer. Now we have to ask the supplier, Ki boss, go to Ariba network and create your credentials. So that is the next process. That is basically supplier registration. Then supplier registration, what we will do? We will basically say to the supplier, Ki boss, go to Ariba network, create your credentials. Once they create their credentials, what will happen? then their credentials can be used okay very good manoj so now what all of you will say i can use this supplier in sourcing and contracting very good 
very good what you do in downstream PO, GR, invoice, invoice reconciliation, payment, all those things, we will do it. Now, do you think we don't need a supply in PO? What are your views? Why? Because remember one thing, supplier onboarding is part of the upstream solution. Upstream solution is having their own upstream database. So when I say supply registration is completed, supply is available, it is available for upstream only, not downstream. Now what will happen? Now this is where majority of the Ariba consultant will say it does not matter. It does matter. Okay, what is it? Where it matters, Manoj? The matter is, key this supply is copied from ERP. Now, if this supply exists in ERP, can I include that supply in sourcing and contracting? All of you will say yes. Can I include this supply in a PO? All of you will say yes. Then immediately I will say, hold on. So you can use this supply in sourcing and contracting as well as in PO, in ERP, why? Because there is only one database. Now, sourcing and contracting, when it will be integrated with Ariba, what will happen? It will work properly. but against this supplier, you have created a PO in ERP. Now you want this PO to be replicated back into Ariba. What will happen? It will get replicated in Ariba downstream, not in Ariba upstream. And when it will get replicated into Ariba downstream, Ariba will say Ariba downstream is a separate database. So this supplier does not exist in downstream. So what will happen? PO replication failed. Now what will happen? This Ariba consultant will come and say to me, Are Manoj, uh, you know, Ariba integration is not working. Ariba integration is faltu. You know, it does not have any, or does not make any sense. Exactly. Now, what's or how we will basically resolve this thing? How we will basically resolve this thing? So the answer is pretty simple. That we need the supplier to be copied into a what? downstream as well. So how we will do it? Now you understand that why I said to all of you guys, there is a separate database and you will understand in today's session only, what are the impact of it? Generally what happens is like when I, I will ask any Ariba consultant ki, Ariba, why we are doing supplier qualification and they will give me a look and they will say uh, just to qualify a supplier. Achha. Just to qualify a supplier, what about um, uh, 
what about uh, replicating the supplier from upstream to downstream database yes it is required otherwise this po will fail considerably so that is why we do the supplier qualification supplier qualification is nothing but moving of data of the supply data from upstream to downstream so that when we will do the integration between ERP and downstream, it will work without any issue. That is why supplier qualification is mandatory. That is why if you see part of master data integration, three of this step is mandatory. You just cannot say one. And remember, you cannot do it one by one. You have to do this three step for 5,000 supplier, 10,000 supplier, 20,000 supplier, 30,000 supplier, which are existing in ERP. Exactly. See, this was the, you know, practical things which we wanted to discuss in our session. Today is a demo session, but still we are discussing on those things only. We are not talking about standard Ariva. Anybody can talk about standard Ariva, guys. You ask them this question, why supplier qualification is required? You know, can we do without supplier qualification? They will say, yes, boss. Without supplier qualification, you can work without any issue. Achha, why? or you know what's the reason behind it nobody is able to say but this is the reason behind it okay now i know <laughs> uh, we always take some strategically placed break guys during our session so that <laughs> none of you guys you know find this thing to be a uh, what to be basically a uh, lecture kind of thing so we will do what we will take a 10 minutes break Okay, you don't need to basically log off from this meeting. Why? Because we are going to continue with our session after this 10 minutes break. But during this break of 10 minutes, you can have some cold drinks or hot drinks so that you can refresh yourself. And after this 10 minute break, we will basically continue with this downstream and integration. Those are also very, very important. Okay, so let us take a break over here, guys. And after the break, we will basically continue with our session yeah thank you guys let us take a 10 minutes break
uh, hello am i uh, audible to all of you guys can you please confirm yeah you can confirm me in the chat box guys yes sir you are audible yeah yeah uh, yeah thanks uh, thanks pooja for the confirmation yeah okay uh, so let us continue with our session uh, downstream now what happens in downstream now downstream whenever i will say all of you will basically say to me manoj p2p what is p2p first we will create a purchase equation from there i will create a po then from there i will create a jia invoice invoice reconciliation payment but then i will say very good what about this contract you are having this contract in upstream database don't you want to create a pr po against this contract in downstream because your client will ask this thing hey manoj i have you know signed a contract for 1 million dollar 5 million dollar 10 million dollar 100 million dollars 500 million dollars now this contract i want to use for our pr and po creation plain and simple how we will do it then so that means we need to move the contract from upstream to downstream how we will do it so that is where contract compliance will come into the picture so what is it Okay, Manoj. So it's it's a it's it's a bridge between upstream to downstream. Yes. What next? Through which through which the contract will move? The major thing which I ask is like majority of the. uh participant we will ask them that what is the meaning of contract compliance what we do in contract compliance or why you know the contract compliance is required over here so what happens is like they will always say to me contract compliance is basically part of downstream or we don't need it actually contract compliance is not part of upstream not part of downstream it's a bridge between upstream and downstream through which the contract will move okay manoj that means what that means whenever you are implementing ariba for your client upstream and downstream is being used over there contract compliance become a mandatory thing excuse me yeah it becomes a mandatory thing so once it becomes a mandatory thing what happens is like why it becomes a mandatory thing because the contract is there the contract needs to be consumed where in downstream so we need contract compliance so that means that means what supplier qualification also become mandatory why because contract are signed between buyers and suppliers now this supplier exists in your upstream if this supplier does not 
exist in near downstream what will happen it will give an error in contract compliance so that is why after supplier onboarding only we have shown you the contract compliance generally what happens majority of the trainer will say okay after you do the contract management you can do the contract compliance they will not know forget about giving you the information they will not know ki are we are having what the prerequisite is that the supplier qualification must happen first the prerequisite is once the supplier qualification happens over there then only we can do the contract compliance otherwise it will fail and why it is happening because upstream database is different downstream database is different see this this was the thing which i was picking at the beginning of the session application of knowledge not knowledge itself application of knowledge okay so please keep this thing in your mind now all of you will say manoj the scenarios are getting a little bit complex actually not complex there are a lot of scenarios which we need to understand why because in downstream you will say ki boss catalog items are present over there so if i am creating this pr i have to create it against a catalog items then i will say yes then all of you will say are manoj we are also having contract compliance so what it will do contract compliance will do another thing now all of you will say acha will convert the non catalog item into catalog item acha contract compliance convert a non catalog item into a catalog item yes why oh, did not knew it even in sap press book if you go and you will see you know you will not find this thing why because you will know it once you work in the project contract compliance will convert a non catalog item into a catalog item but its type will be different so that means manoj this catalog items which we are loading in downstream so these are actually what non contract catalog item non contract catalog item yes so that means next time in a, in your interview or in your forget about the interview interview they will not go to so much depth you go to a project and your client ask how many types of catalog items are available you will tell them ki non contract catalog items are present contract catalog item are present client will say what is this then you will say non contract catalog item what we will do we will basically load this data within the downstream as catalog subscription okay very good what about catalog subscription oh, sorry what about contract uh, contract catalog item so this will come with the help of contract compliance and it will come automatically we don't have to load it manually oh it makes sense see in our session you will see each and everything which is happening please don't think it is happening because of coincidence we have designed this curriculum in such a way from a project experience <laughs> excuse me first first you will not understand anything but the more we go into in depth you will find out that each of this point which manoj is telling is getting linked to each other just like a puzzle at first when you will try to solve the puzzle it will not make sense 
but then after some time you will see everything is making sense same thing over here so that is why i said to all of you guys that knowledge is not the most important thing anybody can have knowledge by reading a book or something like that but application of knowledge what does supplier qualification has to do with contract compliance what does contract compliance has to do with downstream over there these are part of upstream if you don't know then what will happen the end result will always be having issues so please keep this thing in your mind very important stuff now here also i will do the prpo ir payment now the thing is like all of you will say acha manoj what is this process this process is called as procure to pay okay what is this process this process is called s2p source to pay now both the process gets implemented manoj yes both the process gets implemented but under what circumstances think about this thing under what circumstances manoj this uh, process will differ with each other now the first and foremost thing which you need to understand and to decide on this thing is what it's basically how you are uh, deciding this factor okay now the first and foremost thing which you need to decide on this factor is very simple and what is that what's the usability of the scenarios let's try to understand that usability of the scenario correct very important uh first and foremost thing if you go ahead with procure to pay that means working with non contract catalog item do you have any effective control over it the answer is no why because your end user will find those non contract catalog item where in the catalog section of downstream and they will keep on adding it in the pr and submitting it in the pr then what will happen whether you want to approve it or reject it where you want to do it by the approvers in pr approval process but this time for creating a purchase requisition submitting it and at the last moment of approvers rejecting it this will affect your efficiency so big big organization what they say manoj okay let's go ahead with contract catalog item that means we will sign a contract with the supplier there we will negotiate with the supplier and then we will have a good price so what i want is you to design a solution where our focus should be on s2p source to pay why because it is negotiated we are getting a better deal so s2p will be our priority number 1 priority number 2 is p2p procured to pay why because p2p process will not be optimally negotiated but contract always will be signed after optimally requesting so that is why if you go to any job search for sap or you will see h2p they will ask do you have knowledge in h2p mandatory knowledge in h2p working knowledge in p2p that means p2p is good to have but h2p is mandatory why 
and remember in contract what we will do there is a limit what is the limit the limit is let's say the contract is 100 million dollar so we can create n number of prs but after the 100 million dollar has been used up what will happen you can't create pr against it similarly when i will create a contract i will say for every pr which is created against the contract it should have at least 20000 usd and at max 500000 usd not more than that that means what that i am setting a limit and at what level not at the approval level at the catalog level only so catalog level only i am basically setting within the contract only if i am setting this limit this limit will be applicable at the contract screen only uh, sorry catalog screen only that means before you go to the pr screen if you give 600000 usd immediately i will say you can't do that maximum limit is 500000 usd so that means what it is stopping the efficiency at the you know it's basically resolving this issue at the source of the issue so now our client will say are manoj very good my end user is careless they will be always be careless only but you are stopping them at a catalog screen only through the contract compliance what is happening no inefficiency is happening otherwise what will happen the end user will create a catalog uh, sorry select the item and then basically they will create a pr and this will lead to issues okay manoj this is a big issue okay keep this thing in your mind now very good but all of you will say to me are manoj you, you talked about all those things but where is the configuration so in upstream will majorly work with template sourcing contracting all those things are templates so within the templates what we can do we can configure business rules and validation similarly we can configure task it can be of standard as well as custom we can configure approval workflow serial parallel or custom okay so keep this thing in your mind very very important okay so please keep this thing in your mind now very good uh we will see this thing in template in upstream what we will see in downstream in downstream we will basically see how catalog subscription are loaded now please don't think catalog subscription monoch it will be easy millions of catalog items will be there from 4000 5000 suppliers how will you basically deal with those catalog subscription majority of the ariva functional consultant start complaining are mono so many catalog subscription is coming 5000 catalog subscription 10000 catalog subscription 5 million 10 million catalog items how i will de deal with it there will be issues we know how to deal with it how you can resolve those issues and and how to make sure that when you are doing this activity you are getting it right the first time only that also we will see 
then we will basically see catalog config okay uh, millions of catalog items is there very good so uh, do you think the end user will see all the data properly all the data now of course you cannot show million of catalog item all the catalog items to every user so you want to control their uh, visibility to which users you will show which catalog items that you can configure similarly uh, there can be uh, multiple just a moment guys Similarly, as you can see over here, that um, there are different different uh, uh, catalogs items will be there. Okay, which catalog items will come at the top? Which one will come at the middle? Which one will come at the end? All those particular things we will basically discuss these things. Correct. So please keep this thing in your mind. okay so please keep this thing in your mind over here now very good catalog subscription catalog configurations all those things we are basically discussing now the next thing is approval workflow now what do we mean by approval workflow what i mean over here is approval workflow in downstream is different from upstream so approval workflow in upstream will be done where within the template but here approval workflow will be done okay so now here also you will say serial parallel no here will be static and dynamic what is static static means okay level one will be approved by manoj level two will be approved by nikita level three will be approved by puja like this this is static but majority of your requirement are dynamic in nature all of you will say manas what do you mean by dynamic in nature so what do i mean by dynamic is very very simple what's that that is your client comes and say Manoj, in level one only, I'm not talking about approval level one, level two, level three, level four. No, I'm talking about approval level one. If the user is belonging from Delhi, Manoj will approve level one. If the user is belonging from Maharashtra, then for level one, approval will be done by Iraj. If the user is belonging from Hyderabad, then for approval level one, Sana will approve. And if the user is belonging from Bhuvaneshwar, then the level one will approval will be done by Puja. Now, all of you are thinking these are four different approval levels, actually wrong. These are only approval level one, but within approval level one, what I'm saying is depending on the user who is creating the PR belonging from different region, what will happen? Different approvals will come and approve. It cannot be a user will belong from Delhi and Bhuvaneshwar. 
or Delhi or Hyderabad or Delhi and Mumbai at the same time. User can belong from only one region. So only level one approval will be done by one approver only, but that will differ. So this is called as dynamic approval workflow. How will you do it? Now, all of you will say, Manoj, only four combination is there. It's not a big deal. But then I will say, tomorrow, your clients come up to you and they will say, Ki, there are 400 configurations, 400 dynamic approval workflow levels. What you will do in that scenario? So that you have to understand and that we will see 400 levels of configuration means what 400 levels you will configure in the approval workflow. It does not make sense. Yes. So how will you do it? That is an example of dynamic approval workflow and <clears throat> excuse me, this kind of issues, you will never find solution in any SAP Pressbook or configuration guidebook. We will see that thing, how to resolve it. Now comes the integration. Now, whenever I will basically say about integration, immediately people will jump up and say, uh, configuration, Manoj, configuration. Then I will say, which configuration? CIG configuration. Okay. What else? uh mapping web services boss you know we are functional consultant we are not supposed to be basis consultant okay then what we should understand in integration for example for example have a look at the payment what does payment means now all of you will basically say to me that payment means paying to the supplier okay ERP and Ariva, both the system will be there, integrated to each other, right? All of you will say yes. So my question is, where you will do the payment in ERP or in Ariva? Where you will do it? ERP or in Ariva? Plain and simple. So the answer is all of you will say Ariva only. In Ariva only we are doing the procurement. Then I will say how you are deciding that. If you don't look at the client's requirement, how will you understand that? Or where you will understand that? So your client will basically say, I want to do my payment. And I will say, okay, very good. But where you will do the payment? Now, payment means what? Paying to the supplier. But is your process stopping after paying to supplier? Now, all of you guys are basically thinking, yes, Manoj, uh, paying to the supplier, is this the end of the process? The answer is, no. Why not? Because after paying to the supplier, what will happen? After paying to the supplier, 
you have to keep one thing in your mind and what is that you have to update the account book which account book if i account book right because if you don't do the fi account book what will happen if you don't update the fi account book there will be a lot of things which will come into the picture and what is that picture that is at the end of the financial year the fi account book cannot be closed why because profit and loss are not matching big issue for your client so if you look at ariba what happens in ariba is you can only do the payment to the supplier after that you can't do anything but if you look at erp there you can say okay i can do the payment to the supplier but i can also do one more thing and what is that one more thing we can also post the data in the fi account book why why in ariba we can't do that why in erp we can do that because erp functionality is present over there because it's a part of fi module posting against the account book is part of finance module not part of your procurement module so since it is erp in erp you are having mm but you are also having fi so you can do that now if you are a mm consultant you will say okay we can do it in erp only but are you doing it in mm the answer is no you have to get hold of a finance consultant and you have to ask them ki boss you tell me what is the bt business transaction event for posting of this payment data supply payment data in the account book they will give you the details it's not part of procurement and you come to ariba and if you ask them that, that boss what will happen yes payment to supplier can be done can we post this information in the account book ariba will say no why because it's a procurement solution it's not a erp solution and that is what i said to all of you guys at the beginning of today's session that you look at payment uh, look at ariba Ariba is not an ERP. It's a procurement focused software. So that means all of you will say, one is payment will be done in ERP. And once it is successfully processed, the status update will happen in Ariba. Exactly. So this is nothing but the integration for us. So this is basically called as integration scenario building for every transactional document pr po gr invoice ir payment all those things you have to decide similarly you have to decide for sourcing contracting this is for transactional data what about master data company code purchasing organization purchasing group all those things also you have to decide where it will be maintained and where it will be replicated that is called as integration scenario building and as a functional consultant you have to decide that nobody else can take addition on this part
okay so this is integration scenario building what else mass data loads what does mass, mass data loads means manoj so mass data loads actually means over here is uh, uh, what you can say loading of master data manually into ariva huh? manoj you said there is master data integration automatically we can move the master data from erp to ariva then why we have to load this master data manually with the help of csp files into ariva so for master data integration the most important part is what that master data must exist in erp first and then in ariva to move this data from erp to ariva let's talk about commodity code Okay, so please keep this thing in your mind, which is very, very important. Now, first and foremost thing, which we need to understand over here is commodity code. Commodity code exists in Ariba. Does it exist in ERP? All of you will say no. Some of you guys will say yes, material group. Then I will say material group is what? It's a custom version of material group in ERP is loaded. Okay, so what happens in commodity code in Ariba? UNSPSC commodity codes are used. United Nations Specified Product and Services Commodity Code. It's a standardized set of commodity code. Okay, so please keep this thing in your mind standard set of commodity code nothing else okay very good what else so the standard and custom are not seen so that means even if PC commodity code does not exist in erp so if it does not exist in erp how will you bring that data into ariva Okay, Manu. So we have to do mass data load, right? Building the CSV file for the UNSPC commodity code over here and uploading it into Ariba. Exactly. What else? The next thing is purchasing unit. If you look at the purchasing unit, what will happen? Purchasing unit is present in Ariva. It is not present in ERP. Since purchasing unit are not present in ERP, purchasing unit does not exist in ERP. Now all of you will say purchasing organization, purchasing group, then I will say no, purchasing organization, purchasing group are existing in Ariva. That will come as a part of master data integration. I'm talking about purchasing unit. So what is purchasing unit? Purchasing unit is a master data which is used in Ariva. We will discuss about this thing in our mass data load session, but it does not exist in ERP. If it does not exist in ERP, how will you bring this data into Ariva? So for them, you have to do mass data load. Remember, this is a very important thing, and yes, you have to do it. Last, the CIG config. Now, in here, you have to understand that 25 to 30% of the configuration has to be done by the functional consultant. That we will also understand. But 75% of the configuration will be done by basis consultant. So, one is what we will do. We will also understand the configuration over there. Why? Because let's say, for example, web services configuration. 
this will be done by whom by the basis consultant but they will say which web services what is the shared secret what are the authentication what are each and everything which we need to understand over here because they will say i don't know anything about ariba and since i don't know anything about ariba what will happen this will fail considerably so we have to find a solution for it exactly so keep this thing in your mind okay so all those things we are going to understand so this is basically the demo which we wanted to show to all of you guys and we just want to uh, make all of you guys understand this thing so please don't think uh, today is a demo session that does you know it, it, it's of no value no what we always as i said like from the last five years whenever we will take a demo session we will tell to all of you guys that remember demo session is a session where you are initiation where your initiation begins now once you come to the first session what happens that is where we will further build up the knowledge okay so i hope that all of you guys uh, understood that in ariba what happens is uh, the whole way of working is very very different from sap now why because sap ariba cloud version was launched in 2010 that means it was developed in 2008 2009 very good developed by whom developed by ariba as a non sap company acha so when ariba became an sap company in september 2012 that is why if you look at ariba's technology ariba's architecture ariba's process design everything is different from sap why because it was designed by a non sap company mm s4 hana srm they are basically designed by in house sap team so they will be same not with ariba so that is why ariba was acquired by sap in september 2012 okay so keep this thing in your mind now guys if you are having any queries or question you can raise your hand we will be taking a queries or question over here so please don't try to raise your hand uh, uh what you can say uh, physically i won't be able to see in the go to training app only you can basically raise your hand yeah uh, amit i think you can unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask your query yes manoj hi uh, actually there are a lot of questions now regarding catalog non catalog but uh, basic question can we uh, integrate ariba to non sap systems because because now we are talking about the integration between sap and ariba but can we use uh, without sap or any other uh, system yeah uh, that you can do but remember uh, with sap product uh you will have the interfaces right interfaces means web services over there which are used for uh integrating the data between both the system so when you are integrating ariba with the sap product by default you will get those time i am not able to hear you manoj for that what happens okay. is like the customization must happen customization must happen means what because the non sap erp system will have a different data format different message format of you will help of a uh, what you will need the help of that uh, microsoft uh, dynamics consultant 
or the Oracle ERP consultant so that they can also give you the mapping logic. And once the developer write that mapping logic, the integration will happen properly. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, any other queries from it? Uh, you can go ahead and ask. No, uh, not now. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Okay. Uh, if there's any other queries, guys, you can raise your hand or we can basically conclude our session for the day. Okay, good. I think we are not having any other queries, so we can basically uh, conclude our session for today, guys. Okay, yeah. So once again, thanks, Pooja, for conducting the session, and thanks all of you guys for participating in our session. And uh, we are good to conclude our session for today. Yeah, thank you. And those of you guys who are interested in the, our session, please get in touch with our uh, sales consultant. They will help you in registering for the session. Yeah, thank you, guys. Let's conclude our session for the day.